I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods 9 to the Sky. It seems I have a visitor, but this visitor is super, super handy because we can buy tons of different things off of these traders. But one of the things that this trader drops outside of all of the beautiful loot that it has to offer is leads. Yes, you can get leads pretty easily without even killing these guys uh, if you want. But of course, these guys to drop some leather. So, I mean, if you can get over the fact of doing this, then you should be fine. And the faster you take these guys out, ah, uh, yes, the faster we learn about the knowledge of death. Remember those leads that I were talking about? Ah, uh, yes, the leads are very important because there's something very special early game that we can make that is gonna make our life a lot easier moving forward. Especially if you love building like I do. And that is the balloon on a stick from none other than Soren, who makes Zycraft. And this thing right here just requires some wool, a log, and a lead. And this is going to be your favorite tool for getting around the base. Trust me. All you have to do is place it down, and we are connected. And I now have a balloon, and I have a lead wrapped around my waist, allowing me to double tap space and fly. Yes, but I can only fly up to a certain distance before, well, boop, our balloon pops and our lead breaks. And uh, it's really nice. It's a really nice early game method of having some sort of flight that allows us to reach heights. For, ex for example, up here where we can get on top of our buildings and stuff. Um, and of course, yes, if we want to break this, we can just break it and we get our, our stuff back again. Ready to be placed, you can place it onto walls. So if you need a little bit more space, it just allows you to, to fly around and access those tricky positions that you tend to, uh, to find in modded, where you need to place a machine in just the right way, but you'd have to break down half your building in order to do that. This is a great little addition and I love this. Now, this isn't the only Zycraft thing we're going to be diving into today because Zycraft, honestly, while it's not in the quest book and not really mentioned a whole lot, it is a very, very powerful mod in this particular pack. And honestly, one that you may be quite unfamiliar with as it's been a long time since this mod has been fully updated and implemented like it is now. And so as we're still working on the early parts of this mod pack, we are going to utilize Zycraft in a way that is going to help our early game go much, much quicker. So how exactly is Zycraft going to help me out early game? Well, let me sort of explain a little bit. Starting out, we're gonna need Ender Pearls, and that is going to lead us into these gateways that we can use, which is gonna be a great help without needing to make a mob farm right now. And also Ender Pearls have a ton of uses for just getting into mob farms in general. And well, mob farms in Skyblocks are very, very powerful. And so to maximize the way we gather Ender Pearls without building a vanilla style Enderman farm, well, we can dive into some more of the Ex Nihilo kind of stuff, or Ex Decorum in this particular pack. And one way that we can get End Drops is by actually making End Stone. But it, making End Stone requires quite the process. If we take a look at End Stone, we will see that End Stone can be made inside of a barrel, not a wooden barrel, by the way. It has to be done in a stone barrel when it involves lava but we have to incorporate this by placing lava inside of a stone barrel and then right clicking it with glowstone and that produces in stone. Now this process, while it can be automated, is not something that I particularly want to automate this way. So while I'm gonna have to do it that way for right now, there's gonna be a way to do it a lot faster and sort of automate it really, really soon. But to do that, it's going to require diving into thermal, just a little bit, thermal series, where we are going to make a couple of different alloys to get started with making an igneous extruder. Now at this current version, the igneous extruder is kind of hidden from JEI, but an easy way to see the igneous extruder is by looking at the extractor from Zycraft. So we're gonna dive into how the extractor works as well, but we need this Kiwi, I believe they're called Kiwi, Kiwi bricks in order to make this. And the only way to get Kiwi bricks in this pack uh, as of this moment is through the Igneous Extruder. And so you can go ahead and see the Igneous Extruder here. You can hit A on it to place it over here in your bookmark bar. 
And so the Igneous Extruder, once you see it over here, you can click it to see the recipe. Um, so this is implemented into the world. I just don't know why it's uh, kind of hidden in JEI over here because there are water recipes, which water recipes do also make netherrack. So once we make this and have our first netherrack, we can actually start making more netherrack. And the reason why I need the uh, extruder in the first place is so I can make the extractor because the extractor can do a ton of awesome things. It can make a ton of different materials just from certain materials that are underneath it or in any orientation as this list. I'll show you how this works in a moment, uh, but you can make lava, you can make fluids, you can make all kinds of stuff, you can make more moss and all kinds of interesting recipes that are definitely gonna be worth it. Look at that, you can actually make certus dust from a flawless budding, that is if you had a flawless and so on and so forth. But one of the main things I wanna use it for right now is just making more instone, meaning that I can sieve these crushed instones to get enderpearls early game. And remember how powerful enderpearls are? Oh, they are gonna be so helpful today. Now, one of the best ways for me to get started in making the igneous extruder and to be able to make these alloys is just by using the dust. So if you've used your hammer, you should have some dust laying around. For example, iron, copper, and nickel. When these dusts are combined, you can get yourself some constantine dust, which is going to be necessary for making the igneous extruder by making that gear. But the nickel is going to be used like so. I believe it is two iron to one nickel dust will make that invar that we needed to get started with thermal. Now I'm about to start doing a lot more hand crafts and well, this item that I'm holding right here is something that is going to definitely help me. I just took my crafting table off the floor, added a stick to it, and now I have a crafting table and a stick. And so I can put this inside of my bobble slot to get it out of my inventory. And I have it now key bound to open this up by just pressing F. So when I press F, you can see it actually opens up the crafting interface. And uh, if I hit regular E to open up my inventory, I can still access all of my other stuff, which is a nice little thing that you can do just by searching up crafting table and a stick and then setting a key bind to it. Now I don't have to kind of go back and forth if I want to do a random craft. These are just some nice quality of life things that you just have to have in a pack like this. So perfect. Now that I have myself an igneous extruder, we can start to work towards making some certain materials. Um, now, of course, this is ultimately going to be used for making a uh, netherrack, which is going to be something that we need to sieve. But for right now, instead of me sieving and doing the netherrack, I'm actually going to start producing the material that's needed for the extractor, which is the kiwi block. Um, so this just requires obsidian, water, and lava. Now obsidian, we can actually make this in world, or we can make it utilizing the barrels. Uh, both ways are definitely worth doing. But yes, you can make it inside of a barrel just like this. Now, one way to make obsidian is by just placing water directly above the stone barrel and then grab your lava out and you can place it inside here. And when doing that, it converts it immediately into lava and then you are obsidian and you can pull it right out just like you see there. And that's sort of what it means whenever you see those recipes set up for the barrel. So with that, we should be able to set up our igneous extruder. Now the obsidian needs to go on the bottom like this and then our igneous extruder and then we just need our fluids to the left and right. These fluids go in world. And then what should happen is we should see it start generating this material infinitely. And that goes for any of the material types that are being produced inside of the extruder. And so now that we have some of this Kiwi material, notice how nice looking this is. For a nice black looking block, this is a really, really nice one. And it has a lot of different variants, by the way, in the stone cutter. So you can change this to look however you want. I think this is gonna be a pretty good building material overall. But let's go ahead and start to use this stuff. I need to make myself an extractor and let's start producing something very fancy. That is going to be in stone. Perfect. I now have the extractor from Zycraft, but there is still some things that we have to get set up because the extractor specifically for making uh, the in stone does require a purper block actually underneath. So it does mean we have to sieve and do the normal method for getting in stone for right now. So I should be able to place in some lava here and then click it with some dust and that does consume the lava. So you have to keep in mind, this is gonna cost a lot of lava if we were going to automate it the old fashioned way by well, just hooking up a bunch of these crucibles together to produce a bunch of lava. So once we get enough to make that purpur, this is going to be a lifesaver. Now, instead of waiting on lava from these guys, we can actually use the extractor for this too. So if we take some of the pointed dripstone that we've sieved up and turn it into a dripstone block, we should be able to place it, for example, right here. And then I should be able to add some trap doors 
uh, to the side or the face here and uh, place a lava block up here. And this should produce lava with the extractor. Um, so I believe that set up just like this, this is now filling with lava. So over time, this whole thing uh, should produce quite a bit of material for us. And as of right now, that is definitely faster than the setup that we have over here. Now with just three here, we do have a chance of being able to produce more of this material. So if I go ahead and use my diamond mesh, I only have a couple of them right now, but if I go ahead and use this, oh, I did not get lucky, but it's a crazy chance of sieving. So, I mean, it is supposed to be like a 10% chance uh, to actually get one of those uh, chorus fruit. And you can potentially get a chorus flower from it as well. And I just ended up getting an Eye of Ender, which is interesting that those drop from this as well. Now, in the meantime, while I'm waiting on this, I should be able to start working on my nether rack. Um, so, we are going to need a bucket of our fluid here, which I, I remember I placed one over here of the witch water. Um, and from the looks of it, we place the witch water, I think, inside of the barrel. And then we just need to use a bucket of lava. And that produces netherrack, just like this. So what I should be able to do is use this netherrack and this new bucket of witch water. And I should be able to replace our water that we have here. And then also down here, I need to replace our obsidian. So it's time to make a, uh, well, diamond tool set. Or I could make something even better. How about a diamond paxel? which is going to be a axe, a shovel, and a pickaxe all in one. That should definitely get things done. Yes, a Paxel from Pickle Tweaks. Or we can make the one from Mechanism. I'm actually gonna go with the one from Pickle Tweaks because I kind of like the way it looks a little bit better. And also Pickle Tweaks is the one that adds the ability for you to repair it just by placing it in your inventory. So for now, I'm gonna be exchanging this uh, Obsidian out for that Netherrack or for that, uh, that one piece of Netherrack that we're gonna have down here and this will allow us to start infinitely producing netherrack. Just need to grab that bucket over here and voila, here we go. We are producing netherrack and then this just needs to be crushed and that is how we're going to get nether quartz. By the way, a simple way to automate this whole process is just by placing a hopper or a pipe connected to the stone barrel and then on the bottom here, I have a hopper leading into the chest. So this is technically fully automated as the lava will fill up and I have the glowstone over here. So just given a little bit of time, that whole experience of doing it manually is now gone. And so once all of this is automated like it is, we can just sit back and relax. Oh yeah, I, I have uh, I have netherrack to attend to. I almost forgot. So just like everything else, this can all be compacted and crushed. And there we go. So this should get us quite a bit of quartz. Yes, all of this. Give me all the quartz, I will take it. Now, of course, I'm doing everything manually right now, but the ultimate goal is to automate all of this sieving stuff, and that is going to lead us into bigger and better things, allowing us to have basically an abundance of resources, allowing us to dive into all of these mods. Um, and so this is definitely what we're working towards, getting into the flux sieve, which this is not too bad to make in its own right, but it does require power, and all of those power machines are going to require quite a bit of resources. So definitely having some of these things set up and automated is going to be very helpful. So now that I have some quartz, I can actually start to plan out the base builds. And so here's what I have sort of planned. Um, so I think we have our centralized island, right? We have it set up like this. Uh, but I think I want to tear down most of the things in the central part of the island. And this is where I want to build off of this. I still want to keep that circular size and I want to tear down the house, but I want to start building out my own things. And I think this is where we're going to get into RF tools. So if I go ahead and clear this and let's just make this the island now, um, we can go ahead and kind of think about maybe having a bridged out area going here like this, and then maybe having a ring that goes around it. Um, and then inside of this ring, we will branch off into multiple rooms. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways that I can go about doing this, but I feel like setting up RF tools is going to be very fun. Now, I'm also thinking about a retro sort of design. So I were futuristic, retro futuristic, uh, where our tunnels are going to kind of be like this. So we're going to have like a circle where we're walking through. We have our platform that we carry ourselves through. But inside, we're going to have these like smoothed walls on the outer edges. Um, and that that looks kind of nifty, but it's going to be a, quite a challenge to set up. And look, we've just created modern art. I don't know. I really like the idea of building from the inside out as I've done that in the past. But I think this time around, 
it's going to be a whole lot different. Basically not worrying about what the outside of the build looks like, but really focusing on what the inside looks like, making it nice and cozy. And since we have Zycraft in here, we have a lot of futuristic looking blocks to sort of play with. And with the framed block mod, ooh, we have all kinds of different shapes that we can create that will definitely sort of take us out of that whole Minecraft feel. Oh, and by the way, when it comes to, well, building inside the void, we're pretty much safe because we can jump off the edge. Yes, that's right. And leave our world behind because the Forgiving Void mod is in here. So long as we land and have full health, we will survive. So I think building, so long as we utilize that balloon on the stick and all of this, oh, it's gonna be super fun. Now let's get back to reality here and uh, I need to start growing uh, some of the chorus flower because I did get lucky and I got myself a nice chorus flower here. And I don't know, I don't think shifting here is gonna grow this. So this definitely has to grow on its own. But I think this growing is gonna be faster than us waiting to get chorus flower because it's basically like one in 10 in stone. It is taking a little bit of time to get our initial in stone. But once we have all of this, just keep in mind, this is going to generate one in stone every 1.5 seconds. So it's gonna be one of the best ways of generating in stone uh, before you get into, well, mystical agriculture. Oh yeah, did I mention that that mod's in here and you can also twerk to grow those crops? Yeah, it's pretty powerful. Now, something that I probably should have mentioned early on is, well, I could technically upgrade my campfires and make this generate lava quite quickly. Um, by simply using a superheating element. So there's actually a lot of different things that we can use for the heating on our crucible. And here's just a list of, few, of a few of those. But yes, this is a pretty decent one. Of course, dark matter is the best, but 60 times the rate that we're currently going, which we're only on a two times rate, is very fast. Um, and to make this, it does require steel, but in this pack, you can actually get steel by using steel dust. And just four coal and iron with your ore hammer uh, makes the steel. So it is pretty easy to get uh, the, the four steel that you would need to make lava quite quickly. But I thought this was an interesting and new method as doing that I've definitely done before. I've never used Zycraft before. So I think my chorus, by the way, is ready to go. So let's pop up here. Oh, I love that I can do this. Let's grab a couple of these just to make sure we have them for later, even though I know we're probably going to get more of them. And then to chop the whole thing down. Yes, and that is plenty of chorus. Now we just need to take this, smelt it up, and we will be able to make unlimited amounts of instone. And so now to set this up, you place down the purper, you take an instone, it looks like, on here, and then we put an extractor on top, and then we just need a place to send it. And that should go into an inventory. And there we go. It's just going to produce in stone every one and a half seconds. But this isn't the only thing the extractor can make for us. I think I want to make a couple more because we can definitely make another resource that is going to grant us a ton of saplings. And that is going to be moss. That's right. Moss requires seeds. But to be able to get seeds, we do need quite a bit of dirt. Now, I don't think dirt can be generated this way. We still have to generate dirt the old fashioned way. But as soon as we have enough seeds, we can make ourselves a singular moss. And we can duplicate moss the normal vanilla way, but we can also duplicate it with one of these. So as soon as I've made my first bit of moss, what I should be able to do is I should be able to take some of my stone and a bone meal and definitely duplicate a bit of this. Now, to be able to make this and to be able to make it inside of the extractor, we need, it looks like four of these, a piece of stone and a bone block underneath. So I wanna place some stone away from my current grass because I don't want to infect my grass with this. And then one moss right here. And then we should be able to convert all of this perfectly. <laughs> there we go. So all we have to do to get this up and running is to place in four moss, just like so. And then we're gonna need a bone block down on the bottom, just like it's displayed. And by the way, this can be done on the side, it can be done upside down. It does look like it can be done any way that it uh, is illustrated on that. So if you see all of the, uh, the icons here, you can have this in any of these formations, so long as this is, I'm assuming, the central block. Um, from what it looks like, or maybe the stone itself is the central block from what it looks like. I, it's hard to kind of tell, but it does work. So as soon as we place this in, I can go ahead and place this down and get my chest going just like that. And we should start peeing. <laughs> we should start producing moss, uh, which is fantastic because moss has a lot of options. 
if we take a look here, we will see that sieving this right here, not only is it going to be allow us to produce dirt, but we can also use it to produce a ton of saplings, saplings and also source berries, all kinds of useful things, including mineral saplings, which allow us to get into integrated dynamics. And we can also get into Ars Nouveau, both actually being two early game, really nice starting storage systems. Now let's talk about something now that we've gotten this far into the pack. Let's talk about something that may be a little bit controversial, but I will say it is handled very, very well in this pack. And you might need to sit down for this as we're gonna be talking about more resource generation options. And that mod and that controversial topic is gonna to be Project E, because I know some people love and hate Project E. But I will say in this, it is very limited. And we do have access to the energy condenser right off the bat. It's not too bad to make, requires a little bit of obsidian, and we've already made the covalence dust. And technically, we're already using some Project E things because last episode we made the repair talisman. But today, we should also be able to make the energy condenser, allowing us to exchange a couple of basic blocks. One of those being moss, we could de definitely exchange moss through the energy condenser, and there's many other things that we can do. And to be able to see what all we can do, you can use the pound symbol or a hashtag symbol, and you can search EMC. What this will do is this shows me all of the things that have EMC values associated to them. So notice we have all of these wood types and log types and different things like that, but this is it when it comes to everything that is EMCable. Notice ender pearls are EMCable. They do come at a high cost. Um, and so on and so forth, all the way from slime balls to blaze rods and different things. So we can feed items in and exchange them for different kinds of blocks. And now I could definitely tell that this was implemented definitely to provide some utility as some of these items and armors are very nice and powerful, but it also provides creative flight and it also provides access to what seems to be like creative items even though they're technically not. And it really feels to me like this was added as a resource for builders, just like me. And now with all of that out of the way, we can go ahead and craft this thing up. So it is gonna require an alchemical chest, which in its own right is actually a very powerful chest. It is pretty large. Uh, so basically you have like what contains, I think at several chests, right? Um, it, it's, it's quite a few chests if I remember correctly worth. And I know there is a line in here that does talk about how many it is, but I mean, it looks like definitely four chests probably contained into one. Um, and then we just basically need to take this and we need to turn it into our energy condenser. And this gives us access to all of the Project E stuff without actually having any sort of tablet interface. So this is a little bit manual. Whereas later on, we'll be able to just burn items into, well, just into the tablet itself. But in this case, we can place it down for right now, and we have this accessible interface here. So all of these things are, for example, EMCable, and so is cobblestone and things like that. So we can take like a stack of cobblestone and we can convert it for something that we already have. Let's say andesite is something that we want. So if we want andesite, we basically put the item we want up top here. And then if I put a stack of one EMCable uh, cobblestone in here, for exchange for an andesite, which is one EMC, we can go ahead and put that in and notice it will do the exchange for us just like this. And this one is automatable. You can technically automate this energy condenser, but keep in mind it can get gummed up and can get kind of crammed. Um, and that is where the actual energy condenser MK2 would come along. But that thing is a bit more expensive as it requires red matter, dark matter, and those things are gonna be kind of costly especially early game, as that is going to require a lot of coal and, oh, actually, no, not coal. It's going to require an entire process around the summoning altar, which we haven't even gotten into, which is going to be used quite a bit in this pack. But for right now, this energy condenser is going to be my friend because it does also work with wood, all of the different wood types. So all you have to do is exchange a little bit of cobble. Now, it does say, for example, right here, 32 logs. And, and that means that if I put a whole stack of cobble in here, I'm only going to get two logs in exchange for an entire stack. So yes, it, it depends on the value of the item, but it is going to be worth it later on as we could easily automate this with a cobblestone generator. And that's just going to lead us to a lot more building opportunities early game. And oh yes, I am going to take full advantage of all of the building opportunities. Now I was just out here and a mob was kind of glowing with some particles and I just killed it, and it just gave me step assist 
for our ability totem. That is pretty cool. That is a nice little thing that allows me to just instantly walk up these blocks. <laughs> How'd you get this? Yeah, it was a it was just kind of a, a mob that had like some yellow glowing particles on it. That was kind of interesting. Something to note, this mod can get kind of powerful and I know it's a little bit out of left field, but yes, uh, these ability totems, be on the lookout for them because they are going to be very powerful and very worth it as they essentially give you unlimited abilities from your ability bottle. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I should be able to add step assist into our ability bottle and I should also be able to add that and so now we have Bone Mealer and those both stored in our ability bottle. And I, I think later on you can level these up. So for example, if I want to have Step Assist on, I will just send it to myself in the ability bottle. And now I just instantly step up just like I was a horse. I step up on the blocks, which in some 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 places would be really nice. In a sky block, I don't know how useful that is. It's probably more dangerous to have that enabled in a sky block than it's actually worth it. But we'll be able to hopefully find some other ability bottles, which will be very nice. And I think there's even ones that do allow for Curry to fly down the road. So I think today, oh, today was a fantastic day because I got all of these things automated. We have ourselves some netherrack automated. I have myself in stone and now automated. And we also have the ability to sieve for all kinds of sap. Links. and we even got project e up and running so i hope you guys did enjoy today's episode hopefully you learned something new via any of the tips and tricks i may have shared and if you did be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and well give this video a huge thumbs up also comment down below if there's any more useful tips that somebody who's lurking down in those comments may stumble upon and with that guys it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode and that huge thanks is going to go out to viking ninja 570 Thank you, by the way, so much for becoming a supporter over on the Discord and choosing to support me in one of the best ways possible. And if you guys are looking forward to joining the Discord, be sure to check that out. Link down in the description below, or you can go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join our amazing community today. I would love to have you over there, and I would also love to have you over on Twitch. You can also find me there, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. All that fancy stuff, link down in the description below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.